are back. Our next guest is one of my all-time favorites. She recently returned to TV as Jennifer Aniston's mom on the hit sitcom Friends. But to me, she'll always be that girl. Luckily for you. If you find a girl to love, only one girl to love, then she'll be that girl too. Try to think of a present that you wouldn't have that nobody else would give you but oh, me. Oh, I don't have that. Nobody's given me a kite. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. How are you? I'm great. It's Thanks. so great to have you here. Oh, I'm thrilled to be here. I've been watching you. We love you. Thanks. This I'm is a... Phil's old studio. I know. I had know. good luck from being yeah, in Phil's old studio. That's great. We that's got all good. the positive vibes yeah, from good. him. Good. Good. Yeah. Are you having fun doing a? doing um, Friends? Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, and Jennifer Aniston is very much a kind of a that girl type, you know? She is. Yeah, and I've uh, really enjoyed it. And her hair, you know, everybody always talked about the flip, you know, when I did that girl, yes. right? And everybody would wear it, and everybody does that with hers, too. We said it's kind of odd, you know, having your hair be a star. Yeah. You know? <laughs> People were obsessed about her hair, yeah, it's true. Absolutely. Now, that girl, how much fun was that for you? Oh, it was so great. Did you enjoy it? Oh, we loved it. Because oh, we had so much fun. You love to hear that, because, you know, you sit at home and you watch, and you, you hope everyone's friends and everyone gets along. <laughs> well, you know, my makeup man, Tom Case, is with me today. He was on That Girl, too. And uh, he always says that it was the most fun he ever had on a show. Well, Teddy was so funny. Yes, you Ted know, Bessel. Ted Bessel. Was, Sadly died. Yeah, he did. Did. It was very sad, but he was so funny. He used to do such crazy things. We, uh, I had an assistant once who had never been on a television show before, and uh, she was standing outside waiting for the red light to go off, you know, before she'd walk on the stage because that's what you do. You don't ever want to disturb anything. And Teddy saw her, and he said to her, "Oh, you don't have to wait for the red light to go off." <laughs> he said, "When you want Marlo, you just run in and say cut." <laughs> So she said, oh, I didn't realize that. He said, yeah. So, she, so we're in the middle of some scene, and, and we hear somebody yell, cut! You know? <laughs> and everybody froze. What could possibly be happening? And then we all fell over. We knew it must have been Teddy. I mean, only he would do such a thing. Really what was funny. your favorite episode? Do you have one? Well, I guess the one where, uh, where we met. Yeah. That was my favorite one, because um, it was so sweet, and it was funny because he I was doing a television commercial supposedly in the lobby of this of this place where we where he worked and uh, I was all tied up and he thought I was really in trouble and he destroyed the commercial and I lost the job and all that and I it was a very sweet and kind of sexy little show that was what was nice about Teddy he had a wonderful male kind of sex appeal that that the girl viewers you know really loved yeah you always thought something yeah. was going on yeah. more than Donald Hollinger yeah. was showing yeah, yeah. <laughs> We got a little clip from, from that girl. Oh, yeah? Yeah, oh, let's see it. We'll roll it. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> More with Marla Thomas after this break. Don't go away. We'll be right back. With Marlo Thomas. Marlo Thomas, who, of course, is married to Phil Donahue. Yes. Now, how romantic... <laughs> a set up, a meeting was that. All of America got to watch it. It was embarrassing, wasn't it? For you, was it really? Well, later when I realized, I mean, we did this show and, and I had a crush on him, like right away. And he was asking me questions that were not the kinds of questions he usually asked. He was saying things like, so what are the guys like that you date? I mean, like, you know, like, are they neurotic? I mean, are they rich? I mean, who do you date? You know, and I thought, why is he asking like this, you know? And so, and I was saying, you know, brilliant feminist things that I'm known for, like, oh, Phil. <laughs> oh, Phil, that's so clever of you. <laughs> it was really mortifying when I saw it. Well, we have a tape of it. Oh, you do? Yeah. <laughs> 
take a look right here. Marlo when she was first on the show. I'm sorry that we are out of time. You are really fascinating. And no, you but are. you are wonderful. I said it when we were off the air, and I want to say you are loving and generous, and you like women, and it's a pleasure. And whoever is the woman in your life is very lucky. Well, thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> you can see him blush. Now, what happened afterwards? That's what I want to know. I oh. saw that, and then I heard you were married. I want the details. <laughs> like, what happened? Did well, you? the next, I was on this tour for a movie, and the next day I was back in the same studio uh, on another show, and they're putting the microphone on me, and this other man's, an interviewer says to me, you know, Phil Donahue was talking about you in the makeup room today, and he really has a crush on you. So I, you know, in my brilliant sophistication, said, well, you can tell Phil Donahue, I have a crush on him, too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so this went on. Then when I'm on the show, the stage manager's got with the little microphone, you know, and the earpiece says to me, uh, do you know Phil Donahue? And I said, well, I was on his show yesterday. He said he's up in the control booth telling the director what shots to get of you. <laughs> I said, oh, really? <laughs> well, why doesn't he come down? <laughs> It went like that. It was so high school. It was totally high school. And then he called me. I was in uh, Denver uh, for the rest of the tour. And he called and he said, you know, and Phil's very shy. And, and he, did, he wanted to make a good impression, he told me later. He didn't want to make me think that he was on the make for every girl on his show. So he said to me, um, well, I'd love to see you again sometime when I'm out in L.A. You know, he lived in Chicago. He said, when I'm out in L.A., we'll have lunch. And I thought, oh, this will take forever. This right. guy's going to have lunch sometime when he comes to L.A. So I said, well, you know, I'm in Denver now. Uh, is that very far from Chicago? <laughs> You could come here and have lunch. You know. He said, oh, no, Denver is very close to Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> and did he fly yeah, in? Oh, he, he did? <laughs> yeah. Points for Phil Donahue. <laughs> That's the greatest little story. <laughs> That's something else. This is a, a record that you produced, Free to Be, You and Me. Yeah. That is so amazing. It is the greatest. I remember it. What year was this? 1974. 1974. Yeah. I remember it when I was a kid, and I'm uh, playing it for my son. It is the oh, that's great. It really is. It's yeah. a wonderful, wonderful yeah. uh, piece that you did for kids, and everybody should go out and get that. It's still available, isn't it? Oh yeah, it? sure. Yes. Oh, some of the songs would be perfect for your little boy. Yeah. It's all right to cry, and glad to have a friend like you. Right. It's all about sharing the world, boys and girls together. Is there one, don't climb out of your crib? <laughs> that's what I mean right now. Stop we flushing your Elmo down the toilet. That's the songs I have to write. No, we don't have that. Now, uh, your father, Danny Thomas, mm -hmm. the incredible Danny Thomas, with uh, he founded the St. Jude's Children's Hospital. He was yes. so involved with that. And I, and yes. I know that you are now doing a lot of, of work. Yes, with I'm them. doing what he did, really. Oh, sort wow. of the more visible things, the telethons with John Goodman and traveling. And it's great. It's really wonderful to go there and see these children uh, have a chance at living when they didn't. You know, we just won the Nobel Prize. Yes, I do. And congratulations to you and your family. That's a wonderful, wonderful honor. Dr. I, I, well, the family didn't win it. Dr. Peter Doherty won it. No, you but know, your family's yeah. so involved oh, yes, in it. And, you know, absolutely. it's so representative of your father yeah. in everyone's mind when you think mm -hmm. of that hospital. And now, uh, and now you as well. I, I read in the paper that there was a a young girl from another country who didn't have money. Yes, in. little Gabriella Salinas. You know, another hospital turned her away and, and because she didn't have any insurance or any money to pay for the treatment. And uh, we took her, and she's in remission. Wow, it's an amazing story, really is. We have your TV Guide cover. Have you seen this in a while? Yeah. There it is. I have a TV Guide collection wow. because I'm a neurotic person with no life. <laughs> and um, that is you on the cover of TV it Guide. It certainly is. Yeah, it okay, is. And so you're amazing that it hasn't turned to ash yet. <laughs> well, you know what? I keep them in Ziploc oh, bags. I see that. <laughs> so what? And uh, we got this. Tony Silver sent this in to give to Marlo. Look at how cute. He made a Marlo Thomas pin, oh, which I thought was so adorable. That and I'm is dear. giving it to you from Tony Silver. I'll give Tony that to Phil to wear. All right. <laughs> Marlo Thomas, you're a delight. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much Thank for being here. We'll be right back after this break.